Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and now we are on question number three from this paper four from the 0580 International um, GCSE, IGCSE of Cambridge um, from May, June 2020. This is the paper four, a variant one. This is all about algebra, this question, and the first question here is telling us or giving us a formula, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, which some of you might recognize from physics. It says, find the value of S when U equals 5.2, T equals 7, and A equals 1.6. Now, we don't actually have to know that any of the meanings of any of these things like you might do in physics. Here, it's purely mathematical. We have to basically just substitute the values of U, T, and A into this formula and find what S is without actually knowing what they stand for, what they are represent <coughs> representing. So you're going to have u, which is 5.2, times t, which is 7, plus a half, times a, which is 1.6, times t squared, which is 7 squared. So you can just stick this straight into your calculator and get the answer. So you have 5.2 times 7, plus a half, plus a half, times 1.6 times one point times 7 squared sorry whoops 1.6 and you can just put times 7 squared okay so that's see look you have to be very careful I put 5.2 but didn't press the point properly that's better 5 point always check before you press equals that you've typed everything correctly 5.2 times 7 plus a half times 1.6 <coughs> times 7 squared, and that gives you your answer, 378 divided by 5, which as a decimal is 75.6. So 75.6, that's the value of S, no units, no units given, so we, you know, we just write down S. Then part B says simplify this expression 3A, minus 5B <coughs> minus A plus 2B. So we have to simplify by combining the like terms. So you have 3A minus A, Remember, the, the sign in front of a letter belongs to that letter. So this is positive 3a and negative a. 3a minus a. Then you have minus 5b plus 2b. So these will, these will simplify. 3a minus a is 2a. And minus 5b plus 2b is minus 3b. Okay, that's pretty simple. That's part, <coughs> part a and b. Now for c. Okay, see, we have this um, algebraic fraction, it's multiplication to do. So we've got to multiply 5, x, 5 over 3x times 9x over 20. What we could do is we could just multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator and then simplify the answer in the end. But with multiplication of fractions, it's way easier to start off by simplifying um, by cancelling out any common factor. So this is 5 times 1 and this is 5 times 4. So the 5s will cancel, they leave you 1. And with a 4, and this is 3 times 1, and this is 3 times 3. So the 3s will cancel, and you're left with 3 up here. And the x and x, or the common factors, they will cancel out. So you're left with 1 times 3 over 1 times 4, which is 3 quarters. So there's the answer for this. Okay? That's the answer for part 1, part 2. So actually what you're doing here, if, you, if I just go through that again, what you're doing is, I mean, you don't have to write this out, but just for the sake of your understanding, you got 5 over 3x, and this is like um, times, sorry, times, this is like 3 times 3x over, you can say, 5 times 4x. So then you cancel out the common factors, 3x and 3x, 5 and 5, um, 5 times 4, sorry, 4x. Okay, 5 and 5, and you're left with 3 over 4. Okay, so there's how you deal with that. And then it says solve this equation, 15 over x equals minus 3. Now here what we want to do is we want to um, <coughs> uh, get rid of the fraction first. Okay, so always you have an equation like this where there's a fraction. We want to get rid of the fraction, and that can be done by multiplying both sides by x. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this side by x, and I'm also going to multiply this side by x. The x is cancelled, you're left with 15 equals minus 3x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. So you have 15 over 3 over negative 3 equals x. So therefore, x is equal to negative 5. Okay, now, a lot of people will say, ah, oh, but what we do is we cross-multiply. Well, it's the same thing. 
if you multi if you cross multiply you have 15 over minus 3 equals x it's the same thing okay um, this is what you're actually doing mathematically though and this is it's not really um, you know what's happening you know the x is not flying over there that's not what's happening you're multiplying both sides by x so thinking in this way where you multiply both sides by x and then you divide both sides by minus 3 is a math mathematical way of thinking which will help you when you come to other types of questions involving algebraic fractions where you could make mistakes if you don't um, understand what's happening mathematically okay so we're getting rid of the fraction by multiplying by x first and then dividing by negative 3 okay if you understand that then it's fine if you just write from this step to that step it's absolutely fine as long as you understand what's going on mathematically so you don't make silly mistakes in other types of questions then part two see part two okay so see part two here we have this equation to solve now we can solve this in a couple of ways if 23 was divisible by 4 then dividing by 4 would be an easy thing for us to do and then this would be a whole number and it would be easy but as 23 is not divisible by 4 i don't want to be left with fractions to deal with in the beginning so i'm going to expand the brackets first so i'll get 20 minus 12x equals 23 and now i want to um, solve for x so what i can do here um, people would do it in different ways what i like to do is keep the x term positive so I'll, I'll add 12x to both sides and subtract 23 from both sides. So I end up with negative 3 equals 12x and divide both sides by 12. I have negative 3 over 12 equals x. So x equals negative a quarter. As I said, another way of doing it from this stage is some people would say, okay, we've got 20 minus 12x equals 23. So we take away 20 from both sides. You have 23 minus 20. So negative 12 equals 3 so x equals 3 over negative 12 which of course gives us the same answer minus a quarter okay so it doesn't matter which way you do it. i like to keep the x term positive so i do it in this way that's question part uh, c part two is there another question there yes there's part d this is question number <coughs> i think three part d is a four part d now we have let's see what the question is i forgot now this is question number three, three part D. Simplify 27 X to the power of nine to the power of 20 to the power of two thirds. <coughs> okay, so for this question here, we're gonna use the, the laws of indices, the rules of indices. The way I like to do it for these type of questions is I like, I like to take the numbers, okay, and take them separately from the letters. So this is 27 and two thirds, to the power of two thirds, sorry. And then I have, I'll write that up here actually, and then I'll have x to the power of 9 to the power of 2 thirds. Now for this, I'll use the understanding of roots and powers. That when you have something to the power of a fraction, then the numerator of the fraction is the power of the number, and the denominator of the fraction is the root of the number. So this will be the cube root of 27 squared. And when you're trying to simplify this, when you try to simplify this, then what happens is you find the cube root of 27 first. That makes life easier. It's more easy to find the cube root of 27, which is 3, because 3 cubed is 27. And <coughs> then you square it afterwards. So this is going to be the same as 3 squared, which is 9. So the number part of this is going to be a 9. And then the letter part, I like to use the fact that when you have a to the power of m, to the power of n when you're multiplying two powers you multi when you sorry when you raise something which is raised to a power to another power you multiply those powers together so this will be a to the power of m times n so this will be x to the power of nine times two over three and when you multiply nine and two thirds remember this is like nine over one times two over three they cancel out and you're left with three times two which is six so you're left with x to the power of six this would be nine x to the power of 6 is our final answer. So I like to deal with the numbers using roots and powers and the letter terms using multiplication of powers when I have this type of question to do. I find it makes life a lot easier. Okay, there are multiple ways of you doing it. You know, you could just, you know, use um, the, the same method here. You could say this means x to the power of 9, okay, and this will be squared, cube root of that. But you have to be careful here. 
when you find the cube root of, of something to the power, you have to divide that power by 2, by 3, sorry. The cube root of x to the power of 9 will be x to the power of 3, and x to the power of 3 squared will be x to the power of 6. So you have to remember that the, the square root, you divide the power by 2. The cube root, you divide the power by 3. The fourth root, you divide it by 4, and so on. So that's something you need to remember. <clears throat> so it's in, that's why I prefer to use this method. It makes life easier. Then part E says expand and simplify. So we need to take these brackets and expand them and then simplify the answer. So we're going to have 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared, and 3x times y, which is 3xy, minus 5y times 2x, which is minus 10. Now, some people would write yx, but I like to keep it alphabetical order so we can spot like terms, the xy and the xy. Don't write this as yx. Try to keep things in alphabetical order. That's always better. And then minus 5y times plus y, which is minus 5y squared. Just be careful of the signs. All right, so now we're going to combine any like terms that we see here. And we see the like terms are um, xy's here. So we have 6x squared. 3xy minus 10xy is negative 7xy minus 5y squared. And there we have our final answer. 6x squared minus 7xy minus 5y squared and that's part e done of this question and that's it that completes the question that's question number three done pretty simple question on <coughs> algebraic kind of manipulation and solving equations a bit of indices in there as well so it's a little bit of um, uh, basic algebra there nothing too difficult so that's question three from this paper other questions from this the same paper can be found in the playlist that is going to appear somewhere over here. Other questions from basic algebra can be found in this playlist that will appear on this section. Algebra, I'll call it, I'll call it algebra manipulation, that playlist, and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.